We do indeed. We've got a hornbill that is busy swallowing a scorpion. So you can see, look how it mangled the tail, got rin, rid of the tulsan or the stinger that was able to inject venom, and it is now swallowing it down whole. And it seems like it's having a bit of a sort of problem. Maybe the pincers have got hold of its throat because it's battling to swallow it from there. But I don't think so. I think that scorpion is all likelihood dead. They use those big beaks and they throw it around and they crush the exoskeleton before they actually put them in. And it's really, really interesting to watch hornbills eat um, scorpions because what they will do is that in the sort of when they're teaching their young ones, often they'll show them and they'll pick off the, the pincers first and then they well, sorry, they pick up the, the tulsan first, and that then teaches the young ones that they must be careful of the tail. And then they will leave the pincers on, and the pincers then get the little young ones, and they realize that they've got to be careful of those. Then once that's done, then they'll leave the tail on, and then they kind of get used to that, and eventually they upgrade to be able to then feed off scorpions like this. But there we go, all down. Was that not that tasty? You don't look very happy with your meal, Mr. Hornbill. Or is it still in your throat? <laughs> now this is the second hornbill that we've watched have a bit of difficulty this week when it comes to meals. Ooh, it doesn't look like it went down the right way. You know when you sometimes swallow food and it feels like it goes down the wrong sort of pipe? That's what it feels like now with this hornbill. He's almost just looking at the ground as if to say, oh, this is not going down well at all. Now the scorpion that it managed to grab is a called a vitatus. Have you regurgitated it? No. There we go. It's down now. Well done. Oh, and this light is so nice just to sort of highlight that beak. And I'm just trying to get it all the way down before I'm sure it will then fly off. You'll find they'll fly up onto a branch and go and clean their beak after dealing with scorpions because they break them up so much they get bits all over their beak and then they've got to try and clean everything up. It's so interesting to watch them deal with it. Now, unfortunately, we got you a little bit late, and so we didn't get to see the whole process from start to finish, but it definitely is amazing that they can subdue those scorpions. Now, if that scorpion had to hit one of us, it wouldn't kill us, or, but it would be quite painful. The Tartus has got a nasty little sort of envenomation on it, and it's not very pleasant. It will get quite sore and swollen, and be a little bit worse than a wasp sting, so it's not very comfortable. But for a hornbill, no problem whatsoever. You've got a long beak like that, means that you can get to that sort of tulsan long before it gets anywhere near your face or your feathers, and it means that they can then deal with it and actually feed off it. Very, very cool. So, David, you're wondering if the venom affects them after he eats it. Well, no. They've got a strong enough stomach acid that they can deal with that. And also remember the venom is injected from the tulsan, which is that small little hook-like structure at the end of the tail. From there it is then, that's normally broken off and left somewhere on the road and they then feed off the rest as they go. Yes, hello. Well, picking up a few little scraps of what's kind of been broken off the scorpion as it's been eating it. Oh, there we go. Where are you off to? They're such comical looking birds as well. They seem to have sort of this comical face and they do actually have really beautiful markings. Where are you running to? Seb, he's giving you a tough time. He keeps running away. Where, what are you thinking? So Tesla, who's age six, well, hello, Tesla. Glad to see you watching again today. I always enjoy Tesla's questions. She always thinks of very interesting things. She wants to know whether or not the hornbill's beak has teeth. Well, Tesla, no, it doesn't have teeth. It's got a very sort of hard edge to it, which helps to be able to break things, um, like that hard exoskeleton from the scorpion, but no teeth. And that's why it sometimes struggles to be able to actually swallow the scorpion, because the scorpion is very, very big and the teeth don't break it up. And so it makes it a lot harder to be able to actually eat it. Now, unfortunately, another vehicle came past, so our hornbill flew away.